Hi there, welcome to my series on Minds and Brains. Uh, in this particular episode, I'm going to tell you my theory about why we sleep and why we dream. Um, there's a lot of theories out there. Most of them are to do with memory consolidation or dealing with difficult issues in our lives. Uh, my particular theory explains these things from basic principles, um, specifically to do with uh, metabolic waste. So in, in my particular theory, uh, memory consolidation does not occur dreams do not serve any uh, particular deep purpose and in fact they're simply emergent side effects of a more basic thing that's going on. So let me tell you what I mean by uh, metabolism. So every cell in your body is basically uh, working quite a lot uh, and when it works it creates metabolic waste and it has to get rid of that waste. Um, if it doesn't get rid of that waste within a certain time it actually causes damage to the cell. And most cells throughout your body during the day can easily go into a rest phase and, and get rid of their waste product. But uh, brain cells are special because during the day they can't simply just turn off for 10 minutes now and again because otherwise your brain would be in a constant state of you know, being half asleep and half awake. So it makes a lot more sense for the brain to basically uh, have all the neurons working at the same time full out and at the end of a long day when they build up all of the waste to dump all that waste at the same time in a synchronized fashion. Uh, and being uh, mammals, and I guess hunters in the past, we're pretty lucky uh, because nighttime comes along and we can basically find ourselves a nice cool spot in the cave and basically go to sleep. And then all the neurons turn off, they all dump their waste products, and in the morning when you wake up, you're refreshed and ready to go again. Dolphins, by the way, don't have the luxury. If you're a dolphin and you go to sleep in the middle of the ocean, you just drown. So dolphins are, are pretty cool in that one hemisphere will sleep while the other hemisphere is awake, and then vice versa. Uh, but anyhow, so going back to the, uh, to the sleep thing. So, um, so let's just say, for example, that there's an equation you can imagine, that the probability of any one particular cell being awake is proportionate to the amount of toxic metabolic waste that it's accumulated, and also based on how much it's being stimulated by cells around it. So clearly, even if you're a pretty tired little neuron, if all the neurons around you are still you know, uh, uh, wide awake, uh, then there's probably a good reason. Maybe you're under attack or something, and therefore you should try and stay awake as well. So during the daytime, basically, you, you accumulate waste, and then towards the end of the day, the probability of any one cell starts getting higher and higher and higher that it's going to go to sleep. And when you reach a certain threshold, you're automatically and mathematically going to get a very fast cascade effect, a phase shift, if you will. So when all the cells are almost about to go to sleep, it only takes a few of them actually turning off. That makes it more likely the neighbors will turn off, so on and so forth. And you'll get this very, very quick cascade where all of the neurons will suddenly go into sleep state. And unless there's a, you know, a sharp noise or something that forces you awake, then for at least a few hours, you're all basically going to stay asleep. Now during the night, when a certain number of cells have become refreshed enough they can actually wake up, then it's statistically likely that subsets of your mind will actually flicker on and off during the night. And the longer you've been asleep, the greater is the percentage that a, that a portion of your mind is basically going to wake up. Um, and this is what dreams are. So dreams are basically the workings of a partial mind or a partial brain. Um, and there's a good reason that dreams are abstractions. Let me give you a re uh, an example. So let's just say that um, uh, it's a night time, you're asleep, and your uh, alarm clock goes off. Now, during the daytime, uh, when your brain receives that sound, part of your brain will go, oh, it's a noise, it could be an ambulance. And another part of your brain will go, hey, it could be an alarm clock. And different parts of your brain triggers off memories of what the sound could be. But when your brain is completely functional, and all of the memories and all of the behaviors are kicking at the same time, then you'll rapidly constrain and you'll figure out, oh, it's got to be an alarm clock because I'm in my room and the only thing that can make a sound in this room is the alarm clock. Now, during the nighttime, of course, uh, let's just say that your alarm clock goes off and a portion of your brain wakes up. And that portion of your brain says, oh, there's a sound, it might be an ambulance. But the part of the brain that would normally say, no, it's not an ambulance, it can't be, because there isn't a hospital within range, for example, if that part of your brain is, um, is still asleep, then you're basically going to assume that it is in fact an ambulance, and then other parts of your brain will basically try and interpret what's going on based on just the portion of your brain that's, uh, that's uh, awake. So basically dreams are nothing but 
the normal workings of a subset of your mind. Last thing I want to explain are brain waves. So, um, so under normal circumstances, a neuron is receiving signals from a bunch of other neurons. Uh, but let's just say that one of those neurons goes to sleep. Well, ideally, that neuron would basically trigger no signals at all, and then therefore it wouldn't interfere with any other cells, um, because it's like garbage signals would be coming out if it's not operating properly. But a, a neuron biologically can't go completely quiet. It actually has to fire and get rid of electrical charge continuously. So the simple protocol is that uh, when a brain cell goes to sleep, then it just pulses very slowly and very, very rhythmically. And that's a, an unusual pattern for a, a regular neuron. So if you're a neuron and you're receiving the slow regular pattern from another neuron, then you're basically going to assume that that neuron is asleep and you ignore more that signal. There's one other little twist, and that is, let's just say that 500 neurons around you were all in slow, steady rhythms, but they were all out of phase. So you might interpret all these different signals as actually being a full-blown regular neuron signal. So the other little uh, rule, if you like, this protocol, is that if you're asleep and you're receiving a slow rhythmic pulse from another neuron, then you should synchronize your pulse with the pulse of the neuron that's asleep that's connected to you. And what that means is that all the neurons, when they're asleep, will immediately or very quickly go into phase. So you'll just get this slow rhythmic kind of almost like a heartbeat, the brain beat, if you like, of all these neurons that are asleep. And when they're all synchronized like that, then regular neurons that aren't asleep, uh, it's very easy for them to filter out that noise. So uh, to, to recap my theory, I think that, number one, the purpose of sleep is simply to get rid of metabolic waste. That's it. I don't think the brain goes to sleep to have dreams or memory consolidation or any of that stuff. Uh, second, second part of the summary is that brain waves are, are, are an emergent result of a low-level protocol where neurons basically agree that when they go to sleep, they'll fire a slow, steady rhythm, and they will synchronize with other neurons that are also asleep. And the third thing is that dreams are nothing but the normal workings of a subset of your brain, and they will automatically think in abstraction, uh, and you can use the alarm clock uh, analogy to see why that is. So anyway, um, I think it's, a, uh, I think it's an, uh, a unique theory. I haven't read it anywhere else, uh, and uh, I hope that if you like this theory, that you'll pass it on to other people. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.